And joining us now for analysis is Lee Bradbury, Associate Professor of Political Science from Cal State Northridge. Thanks so much for joining us, Professor. Thank you for having we me. We just had a story on Roy Moore. Let's start with him. It's a tight Alabama Senate race, surprisingly so. So what is the fallout or even benefits politically for Roy Moore, President Trump, and the Republican Party if Roy Moore wins? Well, I think the biggest thing on people's minds is if Roy Moore wins, are the Republicans going to conduct a Senate Ethics Committee investigation and potentially set the stage I to expel know him? Them. Now, we all know and have learned that there's a Supreme Court case, Powell versus McCormick, which says that the Constitution sets the qualifications, so their only option would be to expel him. But the catch there is that you need a two-thirds majority. And so even if you had 48 Democrats and independents getting together to expel Roy Moore, you would still need almost 20 Republican senators. And it is true that some Republicans have come out against Roy Moore, but ultimately, will they go against the president? Will they uh, dare to incur his wrath? And more importantly, the wrath of President Trump's voters if they do go down the road of expulsion. And so I think no one really knows what we're in for, but I do think it is going to be a very interesting time in American politics if Roy Moore wins the seat. In the election next week, we will see. Yes. Let's move on to President Trump and his relationship with the FBI. Director Christopher Wray has defended the agency following claims from President Trump that the FBI is in tatters, according to his tweet. Mm -hmm. The president appointed Ray. So how does Ray navigate his role as FBI chief, given the president's lack of confidence in the bureau right now? Well, Christopher Ray, from, from all accounts, is a total pro. If you look at his resume, it is very impressive. Yale Law School, he worked in the Bush Department of Justice, and President Trump himself had very high words of praise when he nominated Christopher Ray. So I think he's going to handle himself just fine. I think he, he defended his people, as you would have expected him to do. But I also think that if there are FBI agents and there are allegations against them that they've engaged in some kind of impropriety, that they're not focusing on facts and evidence that they are in fact relying on their partisan preferences, I think that Director Ray, Ray will take the appropriate action. But I think it's important to not lose sight of the fact that we're entering into a period where we need to think about the long-term health of the rule of law in this country. Because if you look at democracies around the world that have failed, there's often been an attempt to undermine people's confidence in the rule of law. And I think that we have to be very careful about the rhetoric that we use. We have to be very careful not to take individual instances of misconduct and paint a broad brush of an entire institution like the FBI. And so I think that the American people need to be cautious and vigilant when it comes to these issues. Last question. Let's talk about GOP tax reform. There are new rumblings from Senator Susan Collins that she possibly may not support it. We haven't heard much about the reconciliation process and the clock is ticking. Right. What, think, what do you think will happen with the slim vote margin for passage? Well, look, there was only a one vote margin in the Senate, and now they've got to try to reconcile their bill with what was originally passed in the House. And look, the Republicans are under a lot of pressure. They're under pressure from President Trump, and they're under pressure from their donors to pass something before the end of the year, and that something better include a corporate tax cut. But look, um, Senator Collins is important, Senator Corker is important, and ultimately, it's really important for Californians to know what is in the final bill, because if, you know, deductions for more mortgage interest and property taxes and state and local taxes are not included, and there's nothing that the California Republican delegation in the House does to try to protect California taxpayers. A lot of taxpayers in our state, even middle class taxpayers, could be in for a rude awakening next year. And the president wants this bill before the end of the year. That is quickly approaching. All right. That's right. Lee Bradbury, associate professor of political science from Cal State Northridge, thank you so much for joining us. Thank I appreciate you. your insights.